Welcome back to Grassroots Radio on KLZ 560. This is Andy Pate. I'm sitting in with Chris Cook. And we have Mark Baisley on the line. He's the vice chair of the Colorado GOP. How you doing, Mark? I'm well, Andy. Thank you. We're talking about how to make conservatism inviting to all these people out there who basically look at us as the bad guys. They basically look at us. Yeah, they see us as the guys who want to disapprove of them, want to tell them how to live their lives. And also, we have to keep in mind, folks, we're talking to a society that has been fully trained by the other side. They run academia, they run they run the entertainment industry, and they run the media. Okay, so every time you go and talk to a person, understand, before you get too frustrated with their responses, you've got to reach through all of that to bring them in. And so what I've been talking about is how we have to make it inviting, and I, I've been talking about uh, far-side conservatism versus Doomsbury conservatism. <laughs> and it's for those who remember those two old cartoons. And to make it simple, the far-side one was the easy-to-look-at one, because there weren't many lines in the square. It invited the eyes. The Doonesbury one had a million lines. It was hard to look at. And so when we go to these people who are being programmed by the left, and we bring them these long lists of things that they've got to believe in to be one of us, we confuse them. The better way is to have a doorway into conservatism that simply says, look, let's make it simple. Right. We're about choice, not control. We want to control our own lives, not yours. Do you like that? Okay, well, we and we like every choice that doesn't take away someone else's choice. Now, if you can agree on that much, then why don't you come on in here and we'll discuss any issue from that point of view. And I find uh, you will have a much wider audience if you lead that way. Mark, do you, do you see that kind of an attitude reflected, or how far do we have to go in the GOP in order to get to something that is inviting that way? Yeah. I love... Um the way you opened that up, Andy, you said uh, the other side has been training Americans all this time. They they do control the, the majority of the media, and they are giving the indoctrination message for their side all the time. I had one of those phone calls today that I get every now and then, about four times a year, um, someone um, calling up and introducing themselves to me, that someone I had not heard of before, who first, first reached out to me via LinkedIn, and uh, says, Hey, I am. I uh, feel called to run for Congress, and I'm a Republican, <laughs> and and I've never heard of this person before. And he's a successful businessman, and he's a minority. And so we spent quite a bit of time talking. Great. And yeah, and and these folks come, in, but you learn pretty quickly that their liberty training ain't so good. Those pillars have not been built in in people, even folks like this guy, who looks like he would be tremendous, except that um, he could he would if he ran into Congress right now without all kinds of uh, good training and support systems and so on reminders, then he would be subjected to what uh, I've recently learned called the O'Sullivan Law. Are you all familiar with the O'Sullivan Law? I have never heard of the O'Sullivan Law. Inform us. Named after John O'Sullivan, a British journalist, who says that um, all organizations, all right-wing organizations, eventually move left. And he cites in, in his, with his law um, the Ford Foundation, uh, Harvard, um, and we can obviously add that to add to that um, the Republican Party, and we can add to that the United States of America. You know, you just our, our government, our uh, Congress, and so on has moved, uh, started out right, started out conservative, moved left. It's it's like keeping up with weeds. You just have to continue <laughs> working. You just do. So here's the example. In fact, I use this in my presentation on Saturday. Um, I'll be glad to uh, to share this uh, this graphic. But I I took the scores from the Principles of Liberty, the scores from the uh, the session of two, the 2014 session, specifically for the House um, the, the House folk, and for folks listening in that might not be familiar, the uh, the princi- principles of liberty folk uh, they 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 rank every or they give a they give an up or down recommendation for every bill that's going to come up for vote. They say, hey, this 
um, meets our eight principles or it, it, it is opposed it opposes our eight principles so please vote for this and please vote against these and at the end of the session they rank they rate the uh, the legislators and say here's how they scored as a percentage for uh, how often did they vote along with us or along with the principles of liberty um, I I just mapped this out on a on a graph for everyone for all of the the uh, the house folks for 2014 and what jumps out at you immediately in the visual of this is how it's uh, it starts out at 96 percent 96 point oh, got it here 96.8 percent as the highest and we all know who that is who was that. Vicky Marble? In, just, oh, just, in the house. Not just in the house, yeah. Just, Justin <laughs> Everett. Marble, the, Senate, <laughs> yeah. Justin Everett, famous for being uh, the highest scorer for years now. Uh, right. Anyways, all the way down to, with one exception, there's a, an anomaly in here, of someone who who um, ranked as a Republican 40%, but 96.8 to 53.9%. Huge uh, the, standard deviation. It's just huge, a huge exactly. range. Oh, yeah. there you go. Here's the accountant. And yes, <laughs> and how about with the Democrats? Six points. It's it is it's, it's less than it's like around nine. It's it's twelve point eight to twenty two point one. So yes, they walk lockstep. Our folks are doing like this guy that I mentioned who called today and said, "Hey, I want to run for Congress." Would walk in there and they would put their arms around him and say, "Hey, have you ever considered?" And go, "Yeah, you got a good point there." Um, well, maybe I'll vote for that one. <laughs> Anyways, it just inch at, by inch and inch at a time. Right. Move to the left. Move to the left. And the other side shows no quarter, and they hold tight. So this is what we fight more than anything else. We need to train our legislators. But I think it starts by training all of us. It, it, it starts <laughs> by training the electorate. It starts by training your average voter, your average citizen, you know, just just your average man on the street. First of all, what are the three branches of government? You know, I mean, let's yeah. uh, just a basic civics test. Let's let's get people up to speed on how our government actually works. And, and that ought not be too terribly difficult, although in a leftist run school system, I think that's going to be a bit more difficult. But anyway, get that basic civics education in there and then talk about the principles behind the, the, the declaration. Or I mean, however we end up messaging it and approaching it, those pieces all need to be in there. Andy? Well, the bottom line is we're going to drift left if we don't have an anchor in liberty. Good point. Okay. And the, the, the big, and this is really the big problem that I see the liberty movement having with a lot of the people we elect. We send them off, but we, we think they're anchored in liberty, but we send them off and they start to forget, like you're saying, Mark, and then they, and they get influenced beyond that. But let me ask you this. Let's say we send somebody, send somebody up. How do I put this? Do they have to agree with me on everything to be a good conservative? Do they have to, you know, if they disagree, like, you know, let's say somebody believes in a high minimum wage. Okay, I think the minimum wage is evil. All right, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's say they think we need to raise the minimum wage, but they love liberty. But they they simply believe, well, that's the only way that somebody can afford to you know do liberty. So does that suddenly should I throw them out, throw them under the bus, um, and and basically say I'm leaving the Republican Party if this person ever takes over in my state or, you know what I mean? What do we do? Because right now we're trying to invite people in through the door, and I'm getting to you right here. We're, we're trying to invite people in through the door. They come in, and they immediately see one side power tripping on the other side, and the other side yelling, power tripping, do every, right, back. Power tripping right back, do everything we want, or we're going to leave, and we're going to hurt you by burning down this ship and help the Democrats win. They see that, and they want to run right back out the door. Yeah. How can we be accepting of each other? Because I kind of figure, look, if we can at least agree on liberty and allow disagreements on how to protect, you know, apply, and advance it politically, at least that's a starting point. Do we have anything going? I mean, wh what would you do when somebody uh, compromises in that way? Well, I, I have to stand on the instructions given us by the Creator, again, um, with folks like that. Um, love mercy, walk humbly, um, love your neighbor as yourself. I think we need to to show them. Uh, remember, that was the the second greatest command of love your neighbor as yourself. And but the the first 
being love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and all your mind, um, that is the principle we need to start with while loving that neighbor. So I, one thing I think Mark? is powerful in this is if we share the principles like the principles of liberty, then that's a measuring stick that doesn't say power grab. That says we're trying to vote towards the the, the ancient wise instruction here. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. I, well, one thing, I love what you're saying because I love the humility in it, and I think if we use that more... Maybe we could allow each other to disagree more. You know, I, I love something that C.S. Lewis said. Uh, I know two things. There is a God, and I'm not him. <laughs> and, and I really think that we too often, both the establishment and the Tea Party, we want to become gods of the, of the, of the, um, of the process. Yeah. Okay? And I understand we do it out of pain. We do it out of anger. One side's feeling they're being rebelled against constantly and attacked. The other side feels they're being dismissed and you're throwing away the very liberty that draws people. Right. But I love the fact that you're saying humility. I love it. Humility, yeah. authenticity. I mean, this is all part of it, right, Mark? It really is. So, the, yeah, the three things I was trying to caution against as I was giving this, uh, my deep thoughts were the, yeah, the, that. We've got, we've got 45 seconds, so. Thank you. The moving to the left. Um, the pride issue where folks uh, become too much of a star uh, that they're in they're there because they just see themselves as a, as a cool senator. And then the third one is centralization. Uh, what I called the black hole. Uh, we need to, to not to decentralize authority and trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mark Baisley, vice chair of the Colorado GOP. Thank you so much for calling in and joining in this. I know this is just the first of many conversations we'll be having about this. I hope this particular issue in the coming months. Hope so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This is uh, Chris Cook with Andy Pate, and you're listening to Grassroots Radio Colorado on KLZ 560. We will be right back. We will be right back. We will.